Hi, listen to Heart here. Today I want to talk about submitting a recording for an ICF credential. We're going to cover four things that I think are very important for you as a coach to be paying attention to so you can submit the best recording you can. Okay, recently ICF has made some changes in how they're doing their level one, level two trainings. So for many people moving forward, you are probably going to be doing an assessment within the coach school that you are attending. And this video is not for you because you're going to be submitting through your school and what your school wants is going to take precedence over what I am about to share. So this video is really intended for people who, like me, might be going through a portfolio plan on um, being able to apply for their ICF credential, or I didn't actually go through the portfolio plan, but I had gotten my original coach training in 2007, 2008 timeframe, and I didn't apply until 2014. So there may be a coach out there, you may be this coach, who got their training a while back, did not get the full I'm getting to ACC level training or I'm getting to PCC level training, but rather have kind of a pick from a poo-poo platter of coach trainings along the way. And you're going to be going through what is now considered the portfolio plan, even though you went through maybe a ACA. STH program back in the day that no longer really exists. So here goes. Here are the four things. And let's start with the first thing. In, in the ICF assessments that I do, this, this is one of the things that I see happens a lot. And honestly, it's a huge waste of time for the coach recording. So the first thing is you do not need to read the ICF ethics and limits of confidentiality in your coaching demonstration. There is an assumption that you have a signed release from your client. And so have a signed release from your client that says you have the right to record the call and that they know that it's going to probably be listened to by a mentor coach and also by an assessor for your credential. If you want, you can follow a link below. I have an example of one that you might be able to use with your potential clients so that you have that on record. You want that on record because is an assessor, when I'm listening to an ICF recording for somebody's credential, I don't, I trust that you already have that. And so I don't need to hear you spend five to 10 minutes explaining to the clients all the limits of confidentiality and how you're following an ethical guidelines of the ICF competencies. It doesn't demonstrate your coaching capacity or your coaching ability. What it does is it wastes about five to 10 minutes of time for both you, the client, and also the assessor. So I would recommend let that go. If you need to say anything at all, you might just start off saying, thank you for allowing me to record this for my, my credential and for mentoring, and then press on with the coaching. What's showing up for our session today. So that's the first thing. Do not waste a bunch of time going through the ICF ethics or limits of confidentiality. Um, and again, follow the link below if you'd like to have a an example of a release of um, consent for the recording. The second thing that I think is really important also is do not spend five to 10 minutes explaining to your client what coaching is. What that demonstrates to me as an assessor, I won't speak for any other assessors, but what that, that shares with me is that you do not have a long, thoughtful coaching relationship with this person. And the person may not even know what coaching is, which means that they might be a good client, but the likelihood is they're going to go very much into problem solution focus. And unfortunately for many coaches, it's really hard to avoid the hook of 
the problem solution. And so when I hear people explaining coaching to their client on the call, again, this does not demonstrate to me their coaching acumen or capacity or, or demonstrate their way of being a coach. What it demonstrates to me is that they don't have the right client for the recording that they're doing to submit to ICF to demonstrate how good of a coach they are and being able to hold the container of a conversation, ask open-ended questions, and really model weaving the competencies through the conversation that they're having. So that really leads to the third thing. So the third thing that you want to be paying attention to is choose the right client. If you have a client that you've been working with for a while who you really enjoy working with and who you're really able to coach, not advise, not consult, not tell them what to do, but you really have a good coaching relationship with them, that is the client you want to demonstrate your coaching ability with because they're going to be insightful. They're going to be curious about themselves. They This isn't their first time uh, in a coaching conversation. It allows you to demonstrate getting away from the topic and the solution and get deeper below the waterline, below that iceberg, so that you can be asking them the important questions about what are you noticing as you say that? What would be really important about an exploration on this? What would be different at the end of the conversation? Where would you like to begin? You really can demonstrate partnership with your client. And especially at a PCC and then ultimately at an MCC level, these levels of partnership are crucial to your capacity to easily pass your demonstration. And so choose the right client. The other thing that I would say about choosing the right client is have more than one coaching conversation with them. You want to be setting up a series of six, eight, ten coaching conversations with this person that you can record. And so there may be a trade that you're doing. That's what I did with my clients when I was doing recordings is I would do a trade with them. I had the, they got the coaching and I got the release to use the coaching to, um, for my mentoring and for my submission to ICF if the call was appropriate. So be thinking about the people that you really love coaching and uh, choose that client. And this leads us to the fourth thing that I really think is important. Choose the right session. I have heard people submit recordings that are of the very first session of a coaching conversation. And there's a lot of trying to figure out what the goal is going to be for the overarching coaching relationship at that point. You know, if you're going to be doing a series of six sessions that is not actually coaching, it is really a lot of facilitation of helping the client come up with an awareness around what it is they want to be doing through these six sessions. What would be their goal at the end of it? What would be an outcome? How would we know we had made it? And honestly, while that can be demonstrated as a coaching conversation, it doesn't highlight your skill as a coach to really demonstrate your capacity to be in partnership and curiosity. It is much more of a facilitated sort of conversation as we're trying to get clarity about what's important to the client to be working on through a series of conversations. Which brings me to the final session you have with your client where you are going through all the different things that they've explored and learned. What are their insights that they're taking away from the entirety of the coaching um, relationship they've had with you? I don't think that this conversation is also going to demonstrate very well your capacity to sit in the seat of partnership and in curiosity and really explore what's below the surface with your client. So I would really leave out the very first and the very last coaching sessions from an application, not because they're bad, but just because they don't demonstrate your capacity as coach as effortlessly as the ones in the middle. So session two, three, four, five, 
whatever, right? Whatever those middle sessions are for you, those are the sessions to really be considering when you're thinking about submitting this call for an ACC, PCC, or MCC call. And again, I cannot, I cannot stress enough the importance of having the right client and the right call because at the end of the day, what you really want to do is make it really easy on your assessor to go, yep, 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 yep. Because remember, they are not assessing your client and how awesome your client is. They are assessing your capacity to demonstrate the competencies effectively. So choose the people who allow you to do that. Have fun. Happy coaching. I hope this was useful and I'll see you in another video.